So in this video today for the notes, um, we're going to go over data gathering, bias, and margin of error, all three, okay? So first of all, surveys are conducted to gather data about a population. So a population is the entire group of people or objects that you want information about, whereas a census is the entire population. So like y'all know when they do censuses, the government does censuses, that they're trying to get literally every single person to respond. Um, lots of times that is too difficult and time consuming. It's very expensive. So um, censuses are rarely done. We typically just do um, an entire group of people or we do a sample, which is part of the population. Okay, so that's the key down here. This is a part of the population and it's surveyed when it's too difficult to conduct a census, right? So we're typically going to do a sample. There are different types of samples. The best type of sample is the random sample, okay? In this type of sample, every member of the population has an equal chance of being selected. Um, random samples are usually the most representative of the entire population. We're going to talk about why in just a minute, okay? So example one says a wildlife researcher is studying the effects of a certain pollutants on different types of fish in a lake. And because it's too difficult or impossible to catch every fish in the lake, the researcher decides to use a random sample. Key phrase right there, random sample, right? Okay. She catches five groups of 10 fish each from random spots on the lake and examines them and returns them to the lake. The table shows the number of perch and walleye from each group. So what we want to do is add up the perch and add up the walleye. So when we add up the perch, uh, five times six, 11, 12, 13, 14, that's 10, 19, 20, this is 20. And walleye, that's 9, and 9 is 18, and another 12 is 30. Okay, there we go. So we have 20 perch and, and 30 walleye. So it asks here, what is the population of interest to the researcher? So obviously, the population of interest is the fish in the lake, right? So we're going to write fish in the lake. Okay, and then it's asking us also, what is the sample in the researcher's study? So these are the 50 fish that were caught, right? Then it says, use the table to estimate the ratio of perch to walleye. So we want perch to walleye. So we're going to go 20 over 30, which is equal to 2 thirds, right? Which we could also write as a ratio, which would be either 2 to 3 like that, or 2 to the word 2 to 3. All of these ways are ways that you could write um, the ratio. Okay. And you guys learned this in geometry last year. All right. So you try one. So go ahead and do this one. Um, it says researchers gathering information on gender of prairie dogs at a wildlife preserve. The researcher samples the population by catching 10 animals at a time, recording their genders and releasing them. The table shows the number of males and females from each sample. So this time it says, what is the population of interest to the researcher? What is the sample in the researcher study? And then I'll, again, estimate the ratio. So go ahead and do this and come back to me when you're done. So obviously the population is prairie dogs, right? So that's our all our population. This is what we are looking at. Prairie dogs, right? And then the sample is going to be the, and it says 10 in four sets. So that's actually going to be 40, right? So we got 40 animals because it said um, we got four samples and 10 each time. So that's uh, the 40 prairie dogs that were caught. Now let's add up the males and females. So that's 12 and 12. That's 24 right there. And then we got 8 and 8. That's 16. So again, we're going to estimate males to females. So we're going to say males over females, be great if I could spell, okay, so that's going to be equal to the 24 over the 16, which reduces by 8, right, so that's 3 over 2, so once again, we could write the ratio that way, we could write the ratio 3 colon 2, or we could say 3, 2, 2, and remember, matter order matters here, males always come first, okay, and then females second, when we write a ratio, we write it the way that it is written in words, okay, as far as our numbers are concerned. All right, a non-random sample can result in a biased sample. So <clears throat> a biased sample may not 
be representative of the population. So certain parts of the population could be overrepresented or over or underrepresented. And that's bad. So bias is in, in a sample is not always obvious at first glance. Okay. So we're going to talk about a couple of examples here and, uh, Hopefully, you're going to start to see what bias means. So it says, decide whether the sampling method could result in a bias sample. So a survey is conducted by 100 people uh, randomly chosen from the phone book and asked how long each person has lived in the current residence. Question, do y'all ever look at phone books? Um, okay. So do you use a phone book? Um, I don't even know how you get your hands on a phone book that has people people's names in it. Businesses, yes, but I don't know about people. So um, this is going to be an issue, okay? Um, because we can't really uh, use a phone book to call people, okay? So this one, I would say, is probably going to be biased um, because, uh, number one, people... Nowadays, if your name's in the phone book, you're probably going to have to pay. Okay, so let's just say this one's biased because a lot of people are going to be underrepresented in that um, survey. The next one says a survey of students at school is conducted by contacting every 10th student from the complete roster and asking whether he or she plans to go to college. What do y'all think about this one? So if we have a complete roster of names um, in the school and we call on, we basically contact every 10th person, I would say this one's unbiased because um, no one should be over or um, underrepresented there. Then C says a survey of cities residents is conducted by asking 20 randomly selected people at grocery store whether the city should impose a beverage tax. So here's the question on this one. So survey of cities residents conducted by asking 20 randomly selected people at a grocery store. So the area of the grocery store is relevant here, right? We don't know where the grocery store is located. Um, and that is going to have effect on whether people think that a tax should be imposed or not. So we're going to say this one's biased. Okay. Are you guys starting to see, um, that what, what bias is? Okay. Let's see if you guys can do these you tries, okay? And decide whether the sample describes would be representative of the population or not. So basically, this is the same question. Are they going to be biased or not? Does it represent the whole population or only a portion of the population? That's the question you're asking yourself. So pause the video, come back to me when you're done. So this one says the owner of a health club wants to determine the percent of adults in his area who exercise for at least 20 minutes three times a week. He has the first 25 adults he sees at the mall on a weekend around 10 a.m. So do you think this is going to be representative of the group of people overall? So we got adults in this area, right? So um, adults in this area is a key phrase. Um, and then he asked the first 25 adults he sees at a mall on a weekend, weekday around 10 a.m. Wait a minute. Who's at the mall at 10 a.m., y'all? Uh, yeah only a select few people because most of us are working jobs at 10 a.m., right? So I don't think this would be representative of the whole population, okay? The next one says a restaurant owner wants to know how often families in his area go out for dinner. He surveys 25 families who eat at his restaurant on Tuesday night. So once again, do you think that it says how often families in his area go out for dinner, right? That's what it's asking. Um, and then he surveys 25 families who ate at his restaurant on a Tuesday night. So when do most people go out to eat, y'all? On the weekends, right? Okay, so I would say that, uh, I don't know. I would say that this is probably um, not representative of the whole population either because who goes out to dinner on a Tuesday night? So I would say no here as well. Car dealer wants to know what percent of the population's area is planning to buy a car in the next year. The dealer surveys the next 15 people who come to the lot car lot. Okay, again, I would say no here. Why? Because he's only surveying the people that come to his lot, right? So that's an issue as well. Okay? Because obviously there's a whole lot of people that didn't come to his lot that he did not survey. So those other people are underrepresented. So now we're going to talk about margin of error. So the margin of error of a random sample defines an interval centered on the sample percent in which the population percent is most likely to lie. So to find the range for each, we're going to add and subtract the margin of error from both percentages. 
Then we're going to look to see if there's any overlap in the percentages. And then this is going to tell us whether the results are reliable or not. So if there is overlap, it is not reliable. If there is no overlap, it is reliable. Okay, so we're going to talk about this. We do this first problem. So polling organization conducts a survey to find out how voters plan to vote in the upcoming mayoral election. They report that 55% of the 1,000 voters in the survey plan to vote for Smith. So we're going to write Smith here. And we're going to go 55. And then 45% are going to vote for Thomas. So Thomas has 45%. Now, what it says here is um, the margin of error is plus or minus 6. So we need to add both add and subtract 6 from both of these, okay? That's what we're going to do. So when we add, when we subtract 6 from 55, we get 49. And then that's going to go to when we add 6 to um, 55, we get, what is that, 61? Okay. Then we want to look at the 45. So when we do the 45, minus 6, we're going to get 39, right? So this one's going to be 39 to 51. So now let's put these um, in an order. Okay, so we got our 49 to 61 over here, and then we've got our 39 to 51 there. Notice that these overlap, right, because of this. Y'all see the 49 and the 51? They definitely overlap. So if they overlap, then we have to say that this survey is um, because, because they overlap, the survey is inconclusive. Okay? Because our percentages overlap, those different ranges, okay? All right, let's see if you guys can do the next two. So let's just do this one. Um, you try three. A survey of a random sample of voters shows shows that 38% of voters plan to vote for Gonzalez. So let's do our 38 there. Then we've got Chang, 31%, right? And then, oh, wait, 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 wait. Vote for Gonzalez, 31 for Chang and 31 for Harris. There we go. So we're going to do plus or minus, right? Okay. So we're going plus or minus three plus or minus 3, plus or minus 3, right? So, when we look at this one, we're going to get 35 when we subtract 3, and when we add 3, we're going to get 41, right? So on the next one, we get 28 to 34. When we subtract and add the 3, 28 to 34, so now on this one, um, these two have the same exact percent, right? So notice we're going to do the 35 to 41, right? And then we're going to do the 28 to 34. Do you all see any overlap there? I don't either. So who do we think is going to be the winner of this? It's going to be Gonzalez, isn't it? It is. Okay, because he had a higher percentage and there is no overlap. And it is conclusive because there is no overlap, okay? So here's the next one. Let's see if you guys can do this and come back to me when you're done. All right, so on this one it says a random sample of 42 voters plan to vote for, so we got 42 here and 58 for, po whoa, 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 whoa. That was right. And then 58 for Nigel, Nagel, however you pronounce that. This time we have a, a margin of error plus or minus 7. So we're going to both subtract and add 7 to those numbers. So when we subtract, we get 35, to, and then we add, we get 49. And then on the other one, we get 51 to 65, right? 51 to 65. So here we go again. We got 35 to 49. And then we've got 51 to 65. So I don't see any overlap here, do you? So this is conclusive. And who do we think is going to win? We think Nagel's going to win. And it is conclusive. Conclusive. Because there's no overlap, right?